Hello viewers, welcome to Windows Tech Pro, Thinking Beyond the Limits. Let's consider you have set up as mentioned in the above picture. You have pointed your MX record to Exchange Online Protection. You have configured hybrid Exchange on premises with Exchange Online and created connectors to route the mails based on the email address policies and the target address. You have smart host or its servers for the on-premises mailboxes to receive the emails and that has been configured with send and receive connector to the internal exchange transport server. Let's talk about few important records which plays major role in the mail flow routing and also spam filtering and phishing attacks. MX record. It's important record to the exchange domain. This is where your mail will be delivered first when mail sent from outside world to your domain. So ensure you have created and pointed to the right servers to re receive mails from your re receive mails for your domain. SPF record. SPF record. This is the very first mandatory record after MX. SPF stands for Sender Policy Framework and created in the public DNS as a text record. Normally, it authorizes sender domain servers, which means you are telling outside world about your server. Those are authorized to send mails for your domain. And any mails coming outside of this added IP addresses, recipient domain can act on those mails and reject considering them as a spam. It plays important role to stop the spamming and also phishing attacks. It has a syntax and record needs to be created as per the SPF syntax and the SPF record needs to be publicly available so that when recipient server receives your organization mails, they can compare the organized mail server and the SPF record available servers and take actions. I have written an article on SPF record and how to create in, in my website. Please refer for more details. DKM record. Domain key identified mail. It's simply called DKM. It's a second method to protect from spam and phishing attacks for your domain mails. In SPF, we don't do any modifications in the mail headers. All actions done by the recipient servers and taken actions post validation. But in DKM, we are injecting with the signatures. In the mail headers, we will be injecting private keys of your domain mails and we are going to create one text record that in the public DNS that is called as a public key for the mails. When recipient domain receives your mail and identified as DKM signature available, you try to fetch public key from your public DNS provider and compare that with private key provider in the mail header. If both matches, mails will be considered as a genuine and sent inside to their server and mailboxes. If any validation failure occurs, recipient domains can act on those mails and they can delete the mails or they can do junk delivery based on their requirements. For DKM, we need to do modification in the mail servers and need to create text record in the public DNS. DMARC record. DMARC is the combination of SPF record and DKM. In both SPF and DKM, recipient domains only acting on the mails and they are rejecting or accepting the mails post validation. The sender domain will not get any notifications or feedback from the recipient domains to act on that spam or phishing attack which happens against their mail servers. In DMARC, we have an option reporting and feedback methods which means if any spam 
or phishing attack happened against your mails, recipient domain can send a feedback to the authorized email address of your domain so that you can validate that mails and see who is doing spamming attacks against your mail servers and you can take actions against those IP addresses or the sender domains. In the modern era of messaging infrastructure, we record all of these three records to avoid the spamming and phishing attacks. Considering that you have all the records properly configured, and let us start discussing about the mail flow and how it works. Considering that I have all the records properly configured, let's now talk about inbound mail flow. When we talk about inbound mail flow in Exchange Online with hybrid Exchange setup, we have a two type of inbound mail flow to configure. One is centralized mail flow and another one is decentralized mail flow. So let's talk about how this differs from each other. In centralized mail, mail flow, when mail has been sent from the external domain mail server, it try to find out MX record pointer to Exchange Online Protection and then mail is, gets delivered to Exchange Online Protection using SMTP port number 25 from external domain mail server to your Exchange Online Protection. Once Exchange Online Protection receives that email, it does scanning of the mail like connection filter, malware filter, transport filters and other things. Post that, it try to validate where to deliver that email. Considering domain has been configured with a centralized mail flow, it sends all the mails post scanning to the on-premises smart host using the TLS on port number 25. Once smart host receives that email and it sends the mail to the internal transport servers using the connectors on port number 25. Now, internal transport servers, it validates the mail where to deliver. If it finds Inter, it is internal mailbox, it delivers the mail directly to the user mailbox. If it is find the remote mailbox, you try to send back to the mail using the same smart host on the connector to the Exchange Online Protection. Smart host directly delivers that mail to the Exchange Online Protection using the port number 25. Now, Exchange Online Protection receives that email and it identifies mails is coming from on-premises and that mail sent to the Exchange Online mail servers and Exchange Online Transport Server sends that mail to the appropriate Exchange Online users directly. In decentralized mail flow, when mail has been sent from the external mail server, post validation of the MX record, the mail gets delivered to the Exchange Online Production. Now, Exchange Online Production, it does same scanning for the mal anti-malware connection filter transport. It detects that mail flow has been set up with decentralized. When it finds decentralized, on-premises mails will get delivered to the smart host and smart host delivered to the internal transport servers and the Exchange Mailbox user. When it is finds mail is Exchange Online user, it directly sends that mail to the Exchange Online servers and from there it delivers to their appropriate mailbox directly. In, cent in centralized mail flow, all the mails comes to the on-premises, then it gets delivered back to the Exchange Online. Here you have a control from your on-premises. You can apply on-premises appliances for data loss prevention and other security related stuff. When we consider decentralized mail flow, mails will get delivered based on their location. It is actually splitting the mails. If it is on-premises user, it comes to the on-premises. If it is Exchange Online, it UOP directly sends that mail to the Exchange Online itself. Both have pros and cons, which means when you have centralized mail flow, you can apply on-premises, but when issue occurs in the on-premises environment, complete mail flow, including for the Exchange Online users, will get impacted. In decentralized mail flow, only the 
on-prem user mailbox delivery will get failed if you have any issues with your on-premises mail servers. Exchange Online users will not face any issues. Let's talk about outbound mail flow. Considering your on-premises user sends mail to the external user, what happens? On-premise user compose that mail and send to the on-premises transport server. Now, on-premises transport server using the connector, it sends that mail to the trans edge server or the smart host. Once smart host receives that email based on the connectors you have configured during the hybrid configuration, it sends all the mails directly to the Exchange Online Protection. This is where you can apply transport rules, data loss preventions, all other things from the Exchange Online. And once UOP scans that email, it sends to the internal Exchange Online if the mail composed for the remote user and then it gets delivered directly to the Exchange Online user. If it's sent to the external user, UOP try to find out MX record for that external user and based on the MX record pointer, that mail will be delivered directly to the external domain server using the SMTP port number 25. All the mail flow between UOP to the external world happens through 20, port number 25, it's SMTP port. Exchange Online Protection towards Smart Host always happens TLS connection, which means you need a public certificate with the SAN entries of your domain. If you don't have TLS certificate configured, mail flow between on-premises Smart Host and the Exchange Online Protection, it won't happen. That We spoke about inbound and outbound mail flow how it happens in hybrid exchange setup. Now let us talk about how exchange online pro protection process the mail when it is received from the external world. When mail received from the external world to in the UOP, it starts scanning that email. Let us talk about in detail how exchange online protection process this scanning. Consider external user composes an email for your domain user and send to their mail server. Now, their mail server, it try to find out MX record from the public DNS. Once it detects that mail public DNS, which pointed to the Exchange Online Protection, external domain server delivers that mail to the Exchange Online Protection. Once Exchange Online Protection receives that email, it immediately starts scanning that email. First, it sends mail to the connection filter. In connection filter, IP address validation and sender reputation gets validated. Any problem in the mail or sender reputation, the mail will get directly deleted or will junk delivered based on the configuration you have done. You can do safe sender whitelisting or else you can block certain domains or IP addresses based on your requirement. Once mail has been found genuine, the mail gets forwarded to the anti-malware filter. This is where the mail attachments get scanned against malware and virus scanning. Any problem found in that filtering, mail can be sent directly to the junk delivery or else you can decide to delete the mails once anti-malware filter found that mail is genuine and no problem in the mail, the mail will get processed to the next scanning engine, that is transport rule and data loss prevention. So in this filtering, mail scanning happens again the transport rules and data loss, pol data loss prevention policies have you configured for your environment. If you have configured any transport rules or DLP policies, the mails will be quarantined directly so that user will get a notification to release that emails or else they can delete or leave the mails. It will get automatically removed after 14 days. If you don't have any transport rules or DLP policies configured against the received mail, mail will get processed to the next scanning engine that is content filtering. This is where the content validation and anti-spam validation happens. 
and also SPFD cam DMARC validation happens here. In going forth, next videos we are going to see how SCL value SPF DCAM DMARC validation happens again the mails we will see in detail. If received mail passed all the content filtering and found mail completely positive, what happened? The mail is gets delivered to the exchange online or else on premises and that mail will get delivered to the mailbox user directly. If you found any issues during the content filtering or you want to report, you can report to the Microsoft.